Warren Buffett, who is often referred to as the Oracle of Omaha, is widely considered one of the most successful investors of all time. One of the keys to Buffett's long-term success is his ability to find lucrative stock ideas. So if you've ever wondered how Buffett screens for attractive investment ideas and stocks, you're in the right place. Because in this video, we will take a closer look at how he goes about finding these opportunities and what strategies he uses to make his ultra profitable investments. We will then in a follow up step apply Buffett's three screening criteria to the current opportunity set provided by stock markets all around the world. And I can assure you that the results of this Buffett screener will surprise many of you. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey there, my name is Ryan Zellman and before we get into the nitty gritty details here and take a look at Buffett's favorite stock screener, I have a question for you. If you could only choose one stock screener that you would then have to use for the rest of your life, how would that stock screener look like? Which criteria would you include in your search for the best businesses in the world? Now, if you ask me, I think we are lucky to be alive during a period during which Buffett also still actively picks stocks. And during a recent event, the 2022 Graham and Dot annual breakfast, we actually got some rare insights into yeah, the thought process of the Oracle of Omaha himself. One of the event's guest speakers was Todd Combs, who you might know or might not know. Just in case you don't know who he is, let me give you a brief introduction to this wonderful person. Buffett is actually not the only one managing the capital of Berkshire Hathaway. No, Ted Weschler and Todd Combs both also follow a long-term investing approach and they are expected to take over the entire equity portfolio when Buffett is no longer in charge. Both of them joined Berkshire around 10 years ago and they have backgrounds as investment managers and right now they already each oversee about 10% of the equity portfolio of Berkshire Hathaway. They have a lot of autonomy in making investment decisions with Buffett stating that he sometimes only finds out about some of their stock purchases only after they have been made. But that's not actually the point of this video. Todd Combs, who often visits Buffett on Saturdays to talk about various investments and stock ideas, he shared some of the things that he discusses with Buffett during the aforementioned Graham and Dot podium discussion. And we have access to yeah, these valuable pieces of information thanks to a Substack blog that is titled Investment Management Insights. Because on this blog, the author summarized some of the key takeaways from this meeting in a blog post. So let me just share with you what was discussed with regard to Buffett's screening process, his process of finding and picking attractive stocks, which in my view was by far the most interesting part of this podium discussion. Combs goes to Buffett's house on many Saturdays to talk, and here's a litmus test they frequently use. Warren asks, how many names in the S&P are going to be 15 times earnings in the next 12 months? How many are going to earn more in five years using a 90% confidence interval? And how many will compound at 7% using a 50% confidence interval? In this exercise, you are solving for cyclicality, compounding and initial price. Combs said that this rubric was used to find Apple, since at that time, the same three to five names kept showing up. So there you have it. Basically, the Buffett screener only consists of three criteria. First, the stocks he is interested in need to trade below 15 times next year's earnings per share. Secondly, you need to be 90% sure the business will have higher earnings per share in five years. And finally, there should at least be a 50-50 chance of compounding at 7% a year. And before we build the screener ourselves, I'd love to hear some of the names that you think match this or these screening criteria. Please share your pick or ideas in the comments down below. And with that, let's move on. So let's go ahead and actually build this screener. For this, we will head to the global stock screener of ticker.com and adding the first criterion is actually fairly straightforward. We just have to head to the valuation section of tickers screening filters, choose forward earnings per share. We'll go for earnings per share next year. And we want this metric to be below 50. And as you can see, 16.7% of the stocks in the ticker universe match this criterion. But obviously just using this single filter is not sufficient. In fact, just screening for low PE stocks is certainly not a 
winning strategy in stock markets. Many low PE stocks actually trade at such a cheap multiple for a reason. And you certainly want to avoid these deteriorating businesses as a quality focused investor at least. So as a simple rule of thumb, remember that expensive looking stocks are usually expensive for a reason and cheap stocks are usually cheap for a reason. And I think as a long-term investor, it's generally speaking better to focus on businesses with stellar fundamentals, deep modes, high margins, and businesses that generate high above average returns on capital. However, these businesses are almost never available at single digit PEs. So you need to add some other filters as well. Which brings us to the other two criteria that Buffett mentioned. Buffett wants to be 90% sure that the company will have higher earnings in five years and there should be at least a 50% chance of the company compounding at 7% a year. Now these two criteria are highly subjective which makes it hard to incorporate them in a quantitative screener. But I like the way John Huber actually approached this. He wrote on Twitter that the second criterion of, of Buffett reminded him of a McKinsey study that found only one in 15 companies grew at 10% per year during the 2000 to 2019 period, which was entirely a period of expansion. Growth at even 5% for 15 years is much rarer than I think most people realize. So we can actually screen for this. Of course, past growth rates are not necessarily indicative of future growth rates. But if a business has been historically good, this increases the likelihood of the company possessing some sort of mode, a competitive advantage. And a competitive advantage increases the chances that the business will remain good in the future as well. So put differently, I think an ideal business to own is one that offers steady growth over time and is able to survive market downturns and tough economic times. So we'll head back to Ticker and consider businesses long-term growth rates. And I would add three filters here. I want three key financial metrics, revenue, operating cash flow, and net income to have compounded at an annual rate above 5% for more than 15 years. And I'll choose an even longer time frame, 17 years in total to make sure that it includes periods of economic distress. The period that we are looking at includes the great financial crisis of 2008, as well as the 2020-2021 COVID era. And the ticker result confirms the key message of the McKinsey study that John Huber referenced. Indeed, very few companies make that cut. After adding these three filters, only 386 companies remain on the list, so around 0.5% of the entire stock universe covered by ticker.com. If you would now slip into Buffett's shoes, then your universe of stocks to choose from would be even more limited because of the sheer size of the capital that Buffett needs to deploy for yeah, it to actually move the needle for Berkshire Hathaway. Let's say you add a market cap filter and consider only businesses with a market cap above 25 million US dollars. Well, then you would end up with only 14 companies that make the cut of Buffett's screener. And this brings us back to the Graham and Dot annual breakfast. In another passage of the aforementioned Substack blog post, the author points out that Munger and Combs once discussed how many companies of the S&P actually improve over a five-year period. So let me insert another short quote here. Combs recalled, the first question Charlie Munger ever asked him was, what percentage of S&P 500 businesses would be better businesses in five years? And Combs believed that it was less than 5% of the S&P businesses whereas Munger stated that it was less than 2%. The rate of change in the world is significant, which makes this exercise difficult. But this is something that Charlie, Warren and Todd think about. When Com started at Berkshire, they had a 7 out of 10 confidence in the business's outlook for the next five years. The nature of the world is that things are constantly changing. And Todd says they are right now on maybe 1 out of 10 predictions. And if you know anything about Buffett and Munger, you know that they laugh predictability. They try to avoid A, companies that they don't fully understand and B, companies with uncertain prospects over the next 10 to 20 years. Because if they cannot predict the next 10 to 20 years, they cannot value these stocks. They simply take a pass if they cannot do that. And with regard to business predictability, John Huber also concludes that Buffett would choose a very predictable business over a fast growing business with an uncertain future all day long. He wrote, I think this screener 
also does a great job at illustrating how Buffett focuses on base hits rather than home runs. He wants the more certain bets and while sometimes those turn into home runs over time, he's going for certainty rather than maximum expected value. Now, to learn more about another screening technique that you can use to find quality companies, I think you should watch the following video next. Take care.